Registration information, call 984-3215. Beginning the week of September 1st, Channel 20 will present Kathy's Kitchen. Please join me for a preview of this series on the good taste of natural foods. Kathy Hoshijo. Welcome to the kitchen where I'm preparing a wonderful dessert party for this evening. Now the wonderful thing about these desserts is that they're all made with fresh natural ingredients. So you see eating a healthy natural foods diet doesn't mean you have to become a social hermit. Come on into the kitchen with me and I'll show you some of the things that I've done and share some of the recipes with you that I've made ahead of time to prepare for tonight. Now, some of these desserts, if you're not going to have a dessert party, will also make wonderful desserts to feed to your family. The first thing I'm going to make is an almond crust. It's very nutritious because it's got three cups of whole wheat flour, two and a quarter cups of almond nut meal, one cup of margarine, a quarter cup of honey, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now those ingredients just get mixed together really quickly. I've got my whole wheat flour right here. And here's my almond meal. And this is a real quick way to make almonds into meal. Just chop it up real quick in a food processor or a blender if you don't have one of these. And I like to make my own almond meal, although they sell almond meal in most natural food stores. I like to make my own because it doesn't go rancid so quickly. As soon as you chop a nut up, the oils in it start to get rancid. So I like to get my fresh raw almonds and make it myself. I'm going to reserve half a cup of this to make a pear filling for later. And I'll put in the rest of the nut meal for the crust. And then we'll add the margarine. Now I'm using margarine instead of butter to cut back on cholesterol and saturated fats. But just a word about margarine too. If you're going to use margarine, try to find a natural margarine in the store that doesn't have a lot of food coloring and chemicals. A lot of the margarines in the markets are made with primarily chemicals, and they're almost worse for you to eat than butter is. Okay, now these ingredients get mixed together. This crust has a little bit of honey in it and vanilla because it adds a nice flavor it's, and serves as a really wonderful base for all kinds of things. And because it's made with almonds and whole wheat flour, you've got a good protein right here. Now this gets mixed together. If you can look at it, you can see it starts sticking together. This is not like your regular pie crust that you roll out with a rolling pin. Just mix the ingredients together until they're wet enough like this. And then pat them into the bottom of either a quiche tray, like the one I'm using here, or your favorite pie tin. And what I try to do is pat it out evenly and up along the sides so it's a little bit thinner than a quarter of an inch. I'd say between an eighth and a quarter of an inch thick. You just want to 
pat it out and up the sides. Now this recipe will make about three large either quiche or pie plate size tarts or you can make a dozen tarts this size, little tartlets. I've got one already patted out here. This takes a little while and we don't have a whole. So I've got one padded here and these shells once they're patted out like that can be baked as they are empty without being pricked with a fork and you can bake them at 350 degrees for 20 or 25 minutes and then they can be filled with raw fillings or even saved and frozen and used to make ice cream pies. Now I'm going to make a cooked filling for this out of pears. I've reserved one here just to cook. Now this pear tart is made with three quarters of a cup of apricot or pineapple preserves, three tablespoons of pineapple or apricot or apple juice, half a cup of almond meal, one third of a cup of honey, one tablespoon of whole wheat flour, three quarters of a teaspoon of finely grated lemon rind, an eighth a teaspoon of ground cloves, and six ripe but firm pears. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is dissolve my apricot pineapple preserves. And I guess I could have gotten gone into a long list here, but you can really use any kind of preserve you want. I like pineapple and apricot because they're a little bit tart and they add a nice tart flavor to your pears, which are very sweet. Okay, I'm going to just leave these here to simmer and what happens is the jelly dissolves and this is the glaze for the pear tart. And I'm going to put a little bit on the bottom crust and a little bit on the top. But while this is coming to a more of a melt, let me show you what, I've, what else I have to mix together to prepare for this. I've got the pears right here already peeled and cut in half and then the core cut out of them. And then if you just take each half and slit it, holding it together, so the little slices are about real pretty fan type shape when you lay it in your tart shell. And it also lets the preserves kind of drip down between each slice. Okay, and also to put in the bottom of this, we've got the half a cup of almond meal that I reserved from the crust, and a little bit of honey, third of a cup of honey, and then all my spices, the clove powder and the lemon peel, which make the flavoring of this tart really nice and the wheat flour which helps to bind this mixture together because it's kind of a creamy mixture. And what happens is this mixture makes almost like a little pudding that comes up around the pears. And let's check on the preserves and see how they're doing. There, this is how it should be. See how that's just dissolved to like a liquid. So I'll turn this off. And what happens here is I should, I'm going to use about a quarter cup of this in the bottom of the crust. And I'm going to just brush it smooth onto the top, all the way across the crust here. And this gives you a little bit of that nice apricot or pineapple flavor on the bottom. And of course, when I use apricot or pineapple preserves, I always go to the natural food store or the natural food market, my soup or aisle in my supermarket, and get the ones that are made without sugar. There are some that are made with honey, and there are other ones that are made with just the fruit themselves. So many fruits are so naturally sweet, and then of course, when they're cooked down, that sweetness condenses and you really don't need to add extra sugar. Okay, now this nut mixture, the nut and whole wheat flour mixture, 
just gets spread out on the bottom of the pie crust. And as you can see, it's fairly thick. But what happens as you cook this is that the crust or the honey liquefies and it bubbles up between the pears. And then we'll put the pears in here. And you just want to lay them in and arrange them very nicely. Try to put all the pear halves in in sections so they're whole pears and then just let them divide up and fan out a tiny bit like this. Now when you think about it, this whole pear tart between the bottom filling and the crust as well as the apricot preserves contains only about not even half a cup of honey. And compared to a regular pie recipe that would contain a few cups of sugar, this is definitely a lot healthier for you. It's not going to mess up your blood sugar levels at all. There we go. Now, what I try to do is if there are places where there are big holes left after I've got the majority of the halves in, as I take the rest of the halves and just kind of break them up and fill in the spaces, just like that. So you, basically the whole surface of this tart is covered with pears. Now this goes in, into the oven and you can bake it at the same time that you bake your empty pie tart shells at 350 degrees, except they bake for 20 minutes and this one bakes for 30. And then after it's baked for 30 minutes, you're going to want to pull it out of the oven. I have one in here. That's baked for 30 minutes, but it's not quite done. After it's baked for 30 minutes, you take it out of the oven and pour the rest of your preserves right on the top just like this. Try to cover all of the pears and use it all up. This adds nice flavor. And then spread it out just like this. And then put this back in the oven and bake it for another 10 minutes. And you can make wonderful cook tarts just like this one that have the natural juices contained right there in the shell or you can also fill an already cooked shell with nice, natural, fresh... Come on over here and I'll show you some that I've already assembled. You can use any kind of fresh fruit that's in season. Now luckily for us, we've got apricots and peaches in season. We have some seedless grapes and some fresh strawberries. You can use any kind of fruit that you can use whole, whether any kind of berry is fine or you can take fruits that you can cut and don't lose a lot of juice like your peaches or apricots and to make the tarts all you have to do is take whatever fruit you're going to have and make again a glaze but this is a different kind of glaze this glaze is made with three ounces of sugarless jam or conserve one and a half tablespoons of seaweed gelatin and a quarter teaspoon of vanilla or almond extract. Now the kind of preserve, sugarless preserve that you use is really up to you. You can use apricot as always safe because it's usually pretty invisible and it leaves a nice little tart flavor too. But if you want to add color, you can always go to a redder jam like a strawberry or a raspberry. And you can really have fun just kind of experimenting with the different kinds of fruits and the different kinds of jams and come up with different mixtures, both taste-wise and color-wise. And really with nice fresh fruit, you have such a wide array of colors and flavors to choose from. Now this particular glaze is a little different from the glaze I just made, 
because the other glaze leaves kind of a sticky glaze over the top of the fruit, and that's about it. But this one is a little more like jello. It actually kind of makes a jello kind of a texture and helps to hold the fruit together. And that's because of the seaweed that I just put in here. This particular seaweed I'm using is carrageen, but you can also use agar agar if you can't find carrageen in your stores. And then just to add a little extra flavor, I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla. Now you don't need to use vanilla at all if you just prefer the taste of the fruit and the preserve together. There. I'm going to just let this simmer so the lumps and the preserve come out and show you how easy it is to make one of these pies. You just take whatever kind of fruit you've decided to use and put it in. And because these particular tart shells are so deep, because I've used a pie shell, I'm putting a bottom layer just kind of thrown in there. And then on the top, you can try to arrange your strawberries a little more nicely. And the idea is to make them just look just really fresh and full, like a, you just had a very bountiful harvest. You just take and maybe just fill in the middle real nice, like this. And then take your preserve and pour it on top. And this will help hold it together. Now this gives you an idea of the fresh fruit tarts that you can make with your baked crust. And you can reserve them also in the freezer, the, just the crust to use in ice cream pies or something. So you see, you can make a wide array of fresh fruit-filled pies in your already baked crust. And whenever I do this, I try to make, if I'm going to, say, have a dinner party like I am, try to pick fruits that are different colors so the table will be very attractive. Now, come on over here, and I'll show you another real light dessert that I'm making, and that is an eggless meringue. And to make the eggless meringue, I'm using nine tablespoons of buttermilk protein powder, one-third of a cup of water, two tablespoons of honey, one-eighth of a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. Now these ingredients get put together and then whipped up just like you would a normal egg white. <coughs> this is the buttermilk protein powder, which I need nine tablespoons of. And I should mention here, this is a new product. You don't want to run to your closest natural food store and buy buttermilk powder <laughs> because it's different. This is just the protein from buttermilk and contains very, very little fat. And because it's a, such a pure protein, it whips up just like egg whites. How many was that? I think it was about nine. <laughs> and then I'm going to add to this two tablespoons of honey because these meringue kisses are made into little things that are almost like cookies. And you serve them like cookies and Therefore, I'm going to put a tiny bit of sweetener in and also a little bit of vanilla, an eighth of a teaspoon of vanilla for flavoring, and then the water. Now, this gets whipped together like egg white. We'll get the mixer started here. And if you look closely as I'm mixing, you can see it starts to kind of foam up a little bit here. After it's mixed together a little bit like that, you add your quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar and then beat this whole thing with the mixer for about two or three minutes. <laughs> but that's a long time for you to have to sit here and listen to the mixer beating. So instead, I've got some already mixed together here. And as you can see, it actually whips up just like egg whites. You see that? It's nice and fluffy, and it makes a nice stiff peak. It peaks just like egg whites. So here we have 
a very nutritious replacement for egg whites that contains 97% protein and 0.5% fat. Now, I'm going to just go ahead and spoon these onto an oiled cookie sheet into little kiss kind of shapes. But if you want, you can put this through a pastry bag too and make them just a lot fancier looking. And I should mention this particular recipe here, without baking it, you can take this and use it as a very light icing on cakes. It's nice and sweet and it's just a real, real nice airy texture. Makes wonderful icing. And this whole cookie sheet should get put in the oven and baked at a very low heat. We don't want it to burn or anything. Anyways, that's the general idea. And I'll reserve some of this for icing tomorrow because I've got some in the oven already. And see how they hold their shape? It really depends on how you shape them, what they're going to turn out like. So I'll take this in the oven. This has to bake at 275 degrees. And it should bake for about four or five minutes. Just bake it long enough for the meringues to get a tiny bit brown on the top, just like a real egg white meringue. And then turn the oven off and crack the oven door like this. And just let the meringues cool inside of the oven door. And as soon as they're cool, you can take them out. And this is what they look like. Now, if you want, when you make these, you can also fold in very finely chopped nuts to make a finer, different kind of a cookie. But tonight, since I have some almond nut crust in the tarts, I'm not using those nuts. Isn't that pretty? And then they pick up and hold their shape, just like a little meringue, and they can be eaten just like this as a dessert or put on top of a banana or a slice of fruit. Tonight, I'm going to serve these meringues, my eggless meringue kisses, just as they are, to balance out the different tastes and textures that are going to already be on the table. In serving any kind of meal or party, it's real important to balance the tastes and textures that are going to appear on the table. And since I've already got something crunchy in the nut crusts, as well as the nice, sweet, juicy flavors of the different fruits, I'm going to serve these just like they are for a nice, light dessert that the guests can just pick up. And these can be served also a little bit warm from the oven, if you like. And see how nicely it balances out here. We have our fresh fruit tarts and the meringues. And this is a nice, rich carabombe for that real nice, creamy texture. And we can share that recipe another time. I've got some fruit punch here that I'm putting together. And this is an alcohol-free fruit punch. I made some ice cubes ahead of time. And these ice cubes are made with one and a half quarts of apple juice, one and a half quarts of orange juice, three cups of grapefruit juice, three cups of pineapple juice, and four cups of tropical fruit that's been pureed. And I'll just put them in my punch bowl here, along with some fresh strawberries which have been sliced, and also some orange slices. And of course, you can always vary the different kinds of fruit you use, and then top this all off with some sparkling water. And this makes a really wonderful drink at a party table without adding alcohol. Actually, the National Council on Alcoholism has offered different tips to people because drinking has become such a problem in this country, especially drinking and driving. And they really stress that we try to make parties not centered on just drinking alcohol. 
is really nice to be able to serve a nice, refreshing, and beautiful drink like this and not be serving any alcoholic beverages. And there also are, on hand at most stores, alcoholist wines now that you can pick up. And that's because across the country, whether it's because of health reasons or people really wanting to watch their, al their alcohol consumption, there are more and more of these alcohol-free wines and champagnes on the market. So here you are with a wonderful dinner party and some food for thought. All of our bodies are temporary and bound to wither and die. Therefore, living to eat is a futile goal. Rather, we should eat to live and live to pursue a higher goal, as described simply by Henry David Thoreau. Rather than love, than money, than fame, Give me truth. Get your copy of Kathy's 500-page cookbook containing over 1,000 recipes at a special viewer's price of only $12.95. California residents add 80 cents for state sales tax. Send your check to Kathy's Kitchen, P.O. Box 1122, Glendale, California, 91209. If you wish to use your Visa or MasterCard, call toll-free 1-800-341-4800. is a production of the Self-Sufficiency Association with partial funding provided by the makers of Bipro Protein. We hope you have enjoyed our preview of Kathy's Kitchen. This series will be offered on Channel 20 through Adult Continuing Education beginning the week of September 1st. For more information, call the Adult Continuing Education Department at Chicago Citywide College at 984-3215. That's 984-3215. Explore Planet Earth.